Hey traders, my name is Austin Silver. Today I'm going to talk to you all about Bookmap. I am a futures trader for the last year and a half. I've been trading for almost a decade in total. Bookmap has probably been the single biggest tool that's changed my trading other than VWAP. So today I want to show you how I have my Bookmap set up. I want to talk to you about how I used Bookmap today and every day for my trading. I want to even give you the settings that I use in Bookmap so hopefully you can get the same results that I have. First thing I'll tell you, there's a link in the description to this video that'll give you a discount on Bookmap. When you sign up for Bookmap, you need to have the data subscription from the CME or from the COMEX, depending on what market you want to trade. And you also need the software through Bookmap. The software is where I can actually save you some money for being a listener, for being a watcher of this video. I think it's $150 for your first three months or it's $1,000 for the year. Either way, it's a good deal. And the reason why I think it's a good deal I don't work for them or anything like that, but I love the tool. It's a good deal because you get inside information to a centralized market. I've been trading, like I said, for almost a decade. Most of that was trading Forex, where there is no centralization. So you don't get clear insights as to where the market may want to go without that centralized market. Here, the fact that we can plug in and see orders on the book see the entire market in a way, all the level two data in one easy to visualize kind of graphic, it is a game changer. Let me tell you just a couple other things before we get into this too. I interviewed Scott Pulsini, who is well known for Bookmap. I also interviewed Bruce Pringle, who works for Bookmap. Both of those are on my podcast, The Day Trading Show. Watch those after this video. You'll hear it from guys that are also using Bookmap slightly differently how they do it, especially with Scott and the way that he trades. He's incredible. Um, Bruce is a great, like, information resource, Scott is really in the trenches trading it. And Scott uses a lot more of the advanced tools that I'm not going to get into in this video. So I'll have the discount link below. I'll have Scott's interview below and Bruce's interview. So you can kind of use those as other resources. Another thing I'll tell you is I do daily trade recaps every day on YouTube and on Twitter. I show how I use Bookmap day to day. The best way to learn this, and I got, I got to give Rips a shout out too, because Rips put me onto this when I interviewed him. The best way to learn this, and he said this in the podcast, was to watch this and record it every day and study it at the end of the day, comparing it to where your trades are. That's how I would introduce this into your trading. The setup I'm going to give you today is very basic. You can add some of these other tools on later on that may even give you more clarity. For example, Scott Pulsini is big on the icebergs and the stop runs and things like that. I don't use those iceberg orders. I don't want to talk to you about it because it's not what I feel most confident to speak on what I see helping me. So you can take this a lot deeper than today's video is really my point, everybody. Now, one thing I'll recommend is you have it set up where you're using what they call trader map light. Here is the ES without the trader map light. It gets a lot crazier here because you don't have the algorithms filtered at all. So algos that are flashing orders on and off the book, they are non-filtered here. So the trader map light is what we're going to look at here. You see these two tabs at the top left of my screen. That's where I'm talking about switching between them. To have the TM light, the trader map light active, you have to have both of these tabs open. Now, we'll start with what you see on screen. First thing is the price line. That's the green and red line going through the screen. That's the bid and the ask line right here going across the screen. I can even turn the colors down here so you can see that price line super clearly. The colors are where orders are. That's the liquidity on the heat map. So what we look to do is trade to or from these order blocks because they usually want to fill. One other tool that they have for us are these volume dots. Well, they have a lot of tools. Like I said, I don't use the VWAP on here. I don't use the volume dots on here. I don't use the large trades alerts. I don't do the large lot tracker. I don't do any of that. I use the volume Delta and the heat map. Very simple. What I do with the trader map light is I go into the add-ons here. I add right here, the add-on that says trader map light, and I leave that on filter one. I want that to be on standard sensitivity. That will create the book map as you see it here. I also turn the contrast black cut off. You can see it can be very crazy. I turn this all the way to black, basically. I only want to see the hottest areas where are either the most participants or the most orders on the book. That's where I think I need to be trading to or trading away from. The bottom of the screen has the delta, the CVD. You can see at bottom right here, it says CVD. You can see it kind of looks like an RSI, right? Kind of looks like a trend line. That's going to tell me 
participants, whether they're long or short. Cumulative volume delta. The orders on the heat map tell me where we may want to go. They come on and off the book, as you can see here. But the delta tells me what the current buyers or sellers are doing. One thing to note is you will see colors flash on and off the screen. That means the orders are being placed and pulled off the book. The darker the red, the heavier the orders. So you can see like right here before 1045 in the morning, 1045 is right here, orders came on the book and they were quickly pulled off the book. When it's dark and then there's orders and then it's dark again, that means that the orders came on and then off. Because what happens here when the markets are open is this is moving from right to left across the screen. So these things are coming on and coming off the book throughout the day. Even right here at 25, those orders were here. They came off for a few minutes at like 11.05, and then they came right back on the book. You can see the price right here behind my head. Hold on. Let me move myself. There you go. You can see 25 right there, right? I'll keep myself down here for a minute. So now if we just zoom out a little bit wider, I like to drag the price axis up and down. You can see orders higher and lower, right? On the COB, on the right side here, current order book, we can see them visually represented with numbers as well. So at 58.50, there's 150 contracts. At 59.50, there's 169 contracts. So you'll be able to come in in the morning and get an idea of where could we want to go. And then I like to zoom in and see, are there any more intermediary heat levels? Like today it was 25 that I wanted to trade into. We almost filled it right here at market open, but it didn't fill it. Those intermediary levels become good targets for me. One thing I want to show you about the COB that's really important if we look at the COB and we drag these numbers up really big, you'll see white lines appear on the bar here, right there. I know it's red on red, but you see on the right side of the screen, everybody, that white line. However far that white line is to the right tells me what percentage of that block is controlled by one algo or one entity. So here it's 136 contracts, but a good chunk of it, call it 75% of that. So 190-ish, 90 contracts or so is controlled by one algo which means if that gets pulled, this red block disappears. So you want to be careful trusting those bigger blocks that are controlled by one algo because they may get pulled off the book very quickly. Let's see if we can find another one here, like right there. That's more than half controlled by one algo. That one's not that bad. Half is okay. If it doesn't have a white line, it means it's evenly shared amongst a bunch of people. The further you go from price, the more likely you are to find algo controlled orders as well. Let's keep going here, like right there. 59, 58, almost the entire block of orders is controlled by one algo or one person. So you just need to be aware of those orders and how they may play on price. Now, markets are closed. I'm filming this after the close. It's 4.30, but you'll see orders are still slowly moving here on the book, right? Because the exchange itself is still open, even if your brokerage closed or your prop firm closed. So you'll see, look at this shakiness here at the end, all that color. That's right at four o'clock, right at the MOC when orders are being placed to finish the day. And then those orders I've been talking about at 59.25, they came off the book here right after the close and they're gone now. Also, now we can see orders building at 58.97 down here into the overnight. So what you'll end up doing is seeing there's so much you could talk about in hindsight, but it doesn't matter because the market is fluid. The market is always moving. So the best way to learn this thing is keep bookmap open while you trade. And for example, if you're a guy like me that trades with VWAP, right? Like today, I was long here as we broke through VWAP. When you see us breaking through VWAP there, I have orders up here at 59.25 that I'm looking to trade into. So I know that's my target. I don't know it's going to make it all the way, but I know that's my magnet. Because if you look at when this trade happened, let me just take you all the way back to that. That was at about 11 o'clock this morning when I got that long. Look at the orders. You can see here's 11 o'clock at the bottom of the screen next to my head. Here's the move up on the price line, right? And I can even make that look more visible for you. Where do you see orders, right? There's orders right here. The price there is 59.10. If you watch the stream today, you'll hear me screaming about 59.10. Then the orders were at 15 right here. Those orders filled right here. And then the target was these orders all the way up there at 25. And they just never filled. But that's okay. There was nothing underneath us here to tell me we were coming lower. You see, this was the target. See how it's hotter above and price ends up moving into that level. Not all the way sometimes. Orders may come on in between at 20 and fight it back lower. But when there's nothing down here, maybe a little yellow or a little bit compared to what's going on up here, I know which way I'm looking to trade. So then when I get on the right side of VWAP here, we've got a match made in heaven. Book map and VWAP is all you need. So I'll put the book map uh, discount link down below. 
If you want to come stream with us, I'll put that link down below. Uh, the discount code there is ASFX for 50% off your first month. Also, the code ASFX will save you 50% or more at your favorite prop firm. I'll put links in the description for that as well. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. If you have any questions or anything you want me to cover in part two, please put that down in the description. Make sure you tune in on Saturdays. I've got new podcasts dropping every single week. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.